Welcome to day 33 of our 40-day encounter with God. It has been wonderful how our intimacy, our faith, our knowledge of our God has increased by these studies, the way that God does things, the way that God fights for his people, the way that he is always rooting for us because our God sees our potential. Our God does not see our defeat, our weakness, our lowliness. He sees what we can become. And we are almost at the end of our 40 days and it has truly been a wonderful experience and for that I give praise and honor and thanks to our Lord. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and we say thank you once again my Father for everything that you have done and everything that you continue to do. And this morning the word of the Lord is beautiful and it coincides with our study today. Let us pray. And the Lord says to us today, you are my warrior. And the prayer for today is that God has his battle ready armies ready to fight on our behalf we just have to step out in faith and watch the miracles break forth and he asks us have i not equipped you all who rise against you will fall and those who disgrace my name will be set aside but your calling is to move forward in faith and bring defeat to the forces of darkness. Give yourself to me with wholehearted devotion and the glory within you will shine so brightly, darkness will tremble. Your radical obedience will catapult you into my strategic plans that release your breakthrough you are unstoppable you have the backing of heaven and the favor only a child can have if you could see the angels that have been released to you you would never be intimidated by the enemy again i have given you everything you need to overcome beautiful one you are my warrior you are strong and courageous. You are anointed and treasured. You are cared for. You are capable of more than you know. You are surrounded by angels who are ready to slay the giants with you. Bless the Lord for all his angels, all his power, Bless the Lord for those holy eyes and the spiritual visions. Bless the Lord for the way that he sees our potential and he cheers us on and he says that we are mighty warriors for his kingdom. Bless the Lord that he chooses the lowly things of this world to confound the wise. 1 Corinthians 1, 27. Bless the Lord that he encourages us and he gives us the power to progress and to go forward. Bless the Lord for infusing us with hope infusing us with the faith and the belief that we can do everything that he has called us to do. 
Bless the Lord for his love, which is so powerful that it gives us the power to scale walls and to defeat armies. Bless the Lord for his faithfulness over our lives. Bless the Lord for every word that comes out of his mouth. Bless the Lord for the mercies that are new every morning. Bless the Lord for his compassions. Bless the Lord for his precious blood to cover every inch of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome once again to day 33 of our 40-day encounter with God. And the name of our devotional today is A Man Named Gideon. And the Bible verse for today is Judges 6.12. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. It happens all the time in personal corporate philosophies that says, fire the plotter, hire the aggressive, demote the weak and timid, promote the strong and the gifted. Seniority no longer depends on the hired worker that respects and that has moral code and that has integrity. The next in line could be the last in line. Produce, produce, produce is the name of the game. An appearance makes all the difference. How else can a company survive? It sounds reasonable enough, but a man named Gideon discovered that that's not the way God does business. This fear man was hiding out in a wine press, threshing wheat when he suddenly found himself in what could be a scene on the set of Touched by an Angel. The angel of God was paying him a visit and a strong compliment. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon was sure heaven had assigned the angel a wrong address. He seemed to ignore our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But the Lord had abandoned us and put us in the land of Midian. Judges 6.13 Remember that Gideon was in the winepress, threshing wheat, not the usual place for this kind of work. He and the other Israelites had watched the Midianites raiders ransack their land like a swarm of locusts. Judges 6.5 Every time the Israelites planted crops, their enemies swooped in for the harvest. Like squatters, the Midianites camped on the land and destroyed even their livestock. So the people had cried out to the Lord for help. Is it any wonder that Gideon stared in disbelief at the angel's words, The Lord is with you? It was the angel's turn to ignore Gideon's words. Instead, he handed Gideon his promotion papers another way. This time, scripture records, these are not words from the angel, but from the Lord himself. You are the one God will use to save Israel. Go in the strength that you have. I am sending you. Gideon already knew he was anything but a mighty warrior. Mighty warriors didn't hide from their enemies. His excuses were ready. Who, me? My family is at the bottom of the list of who's who, and I am the puniest member of my family. In other words, what strength, Lord, are you talking about? Even on the eve of battle, this timid leader still needed three tangible evidences to assure him that God really would deliver his people through Gideon. The Lord intended to use Gideon despite his weaknesses. In fact, it almost appears that God was choosing Gideon because of his weaknesses. 
why else would God reduce his army of 32,000 to a puny band of 300 to fight the gigantic Midianite army? Why else would he use trumpets, torches, and clay jars to frighten an enemy army into self-destruction? Gideon was not the first person nor the last in which God delighted to turn a loser into a winner. Moses couldn't speak well, Jeremiah was too young, David was a runt, Peter a coward. Saul was a murderer, Esther was a Jew. Not one, according to normal standards of his or her culture, would have been voted the most likely to succeed. Yet God saw potential in them and used them for his purpose. The Apostle Paul gave us a clue why God's qualifications for greatness include such likely candidates. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. 1 Corinthians 1.27 God saw the potential in a loser named Abraham Lincoln, who in his brief tenure as president affected more change and brought more freedom into our country than those who have served in government for five decades. God empowered a cerebral palsy victim named David Ring to dedicate his life to ministry, traveling around the world testifying to God's grace. And he chose a white collar prisoner named Charles Coulson to bring spiritual freedom into the lives of thousands of men and women locked behind bars. Why? Because God knows us inside and out. He knows our tendency to push the envelope when it comes time to promote ourselves and take credit for anything good. But God also sees something inside that others cannot. It's not that God is always rooting for the underdog. He uses men and women of strong, godly character. He delights in promoting those whose hearts are tender towards his, regardless of their status. God looks into the heart, not as the outer appearance in 1 Samuel 16, 7. He knows that those who have nothing to offer bro broken lives and hopeless futures the recipients of the world's pink slips have nowhere to go but up. He sees the potential and delights in showing his light through the broken cracks of clay pots, those who are totally dependent on him. He knows these are the ones who will honor him the most because he and those watching know there's no other possible explanation then it was God working in their lives. And on a personal level, I can testify to this fact that I was the one that was voted least likely to succeed. I was the underdog, the one that no one thought that I could do anything worthwhile. Uh, I was the one, I was the the one that people always spoke about that that uh, I wasn't going to do anything good in my life. I was the recipient of the broken cracks of clay pots. And I was the one that did not have anywhere to go except to God. He found me sick and tired of being sick and tired and I was ready for a change, and I was ready for a transformation. I didn't go for a makeover. I went for a massive, transformative overhaul by the one true God, the creator of heaven and earth. And I allowed him to chisel away. I allowed him to 
work on my imperfections so that I could be made new. I was the one that he chose as the low things of this world when he said, I want you to write a book. For me, that was something surreal because I almost did not graduate high school because of the, all of the personal problems that I had. And God was asking me to write a book of my testimony. And that book has turned out to be the greatest joy of my life. But he chose me for whatever reason. And I was like Gideon. I was hiding in the wine press. I was weak and I was addicted and I was defeated. I was the low thing of this world. But yet, he chose me and said, I am with you, mighty warrior. Get up. Arise. You can write a book. And there were so many things involved in, in me completing this project for God. It was a five-year process of inner healing, of seeking the Lord, of doing research, of remembering things that my mother told me, my grandmother, my aunt, and just piecing everything together, putting everything in chronological order. And it was the most amazing experience of my life. But I chose to believe God. I chose to believe that God was saying what he was saying about me. I stood up and I believed him and I was able to bring this project to completion. So this story of Gideon is one of my favorite stories in the Bible because God does choose the weak things, the low things, the despised things to confound the wise, to shame the wise. And so that is the God that we serve. He is the God of the underdog, but mostly God chooses a person that does have a sensitive and surrendered heart for him, that has a heart that is a heart that is feeling, a heart that is tender, a heart that rejoices and loves and, and is grateful beyond anything that can be measured. That is the heart that God chooses. The personal thought for today's lesson, it is, it's not what you do, but whom you serve that determines your success. The personal question for today, has God brought success out of your weakness? And how has he done that? How has 1 Corinthians 127 operated in your life? How do you associate with that verse? Let us pray. My Father, thank you so much, my God, for who you are, my God, because you truly qualify the call. You don't call those people that have diplomas and degrees on the wall, although you may but Father, you call the low things of this world, the ones that are weak, the ones that think that they cannot do anything good, the ones that think that they are so far gone that God would not even look at them. Those are the ones that you choose to do great things for you, my Father. 
And I just thank you, my Lord God, for who you are and what you say and how you do things, my Lord. Lord, and surely, surely, my Father, I qualified for one of those clay pots. I qualified for those clay pots that are full of imperfections and full of cracks, my Father. And Lord, there is nothing of value in me or in us unless you are in us, unless you are with us. The value that we may have in this world, my Father, only comes from you, my God. And we boast in our weakness because in our weakness you are strong. We boast in the fact that you are a mighty warrior and that you are our God. We boast in the fact that even though we may be weak and lowly and afraid of fearful, Lord God, you infuse us, my Father, with supernatural abilities, my God, to do what we cannot do in our own flesh. And there is nothing good that can come from our lives except what you produce, my Father. Thank you for visualizing potential in each and every one of us. And Lord God, I declare that I will honor you with every success. I will honor you, my Father with the small successes, the big su successes, all of my successes will have your name on it. Thank you, Lord God. I ask you to bless, Father God, all of my subscribers. I ask you to bless my friend listening to this audio. I ask you, Lord God, to infuse supernatural abilities in their lives in their families' lives, that they all may come to the knowledge and the grace and the salvation of Jesus Christ, my God. And thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, Father.